Memorial Day is a time for Americans to remember more than a million men and women in uniform who have died serving our country. Thousands of motorcycles roared through Washington yesterday in the annual Ride for Freedom. The nonprofit advocacy group Rolling Thunder saluted military members missing in action. And a service is scheduled today at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. The black granite slabs feature the names of more than 58,000 Americans lost during the Vietnam War. Visitors often leave behind personal mementos for their loved ones and comrades. Chip reads at the wall with the tributes that help many people find closure. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning. Hundreds of people have already walked by here this morning. And as you can see behind me, through the people's legs, they've left everything from flags to letters to photographs. Over here, even a teddy bear. It's all part of the effort to honor every single name on that wall. The granite wall and the names etched in it elicit a wide range of responses. Some stand in silence, others pray, or offer a final salute. All right, David, welcome home. Many feel compelled to leave offerings of love or gratitude or remembrance, a pair of boots, photographs, letters, even a last cigarette. Each evening, National Park Service rangers collect the items and send them here, a massive warehouse in Maryland filled to the rafters with objects left since 1982. He has been missing in action. Ranger Janet Folkerts catalogs the items and keeps them in pristine condition. Do you know the total number of objects? We, we don't know the total. We have a, a guess of around 400,000 400,000. Yes. Uh, we never will fully know until we have everything cataloged, which we don't have yet. Which could take a very long time. Yes. They range from works of art to dog tags to a motorcycle. This Harley was left at the wall by the Wisconsin chapter of Rolling Thunder, a Vietnam veteran advocacy group, to remember the 37 Wisconsin Vietnam veterans missing in action. Each item is treated with reverence, but Folkerts says some hit harder than others. This is a letter from somebody who was engaged to somebody who went to Vietnam, and he passed away. Warrant officer James Bosley didn't come home. His fiance Carol, left with a ring and charm bracelet, wrote, Dear Jim, you are still the 21-year-old chopper pilot, curly-haired, blue-eyed, and oh-so-handsome. The ring and bracelet symbolize our youth and what might have been. I really identify with um, the lady who wrote it. Just imagining my fiance or now my husband going and not being able to fill all of our dreams that we had for our future, it does pack a punch. It really means a lot. We want to have that visceral representation. Jason Bain is a curator with the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Foundation. He's working with the Park Service to select items from the collection for an educational center to be built near the wall. What we have here is uh, an infant sweater. Soon after the wall was baby built, this baby sweater was US left by the mother of private first class Donald Detmer. I wanted to bring you teddy bear, but just couldn't part with it. Instead, I brought your first sweater. You were always in my heart. How I love you. And that's uh, typical of the kind of thing you find here. Some of those early objects, what we like to refer to as close to the loss, uh, are just, just packed with that, that raw emotion. Other items, like this I, I, care package, are haunting reminders of families um, suffering unbearable this is, loss. This, is, this care package arrived in country just about the time that Specialist Force Stewart was killed in action. And unfortunately, it was simply stamped with this date, KIA. Killed in action. Killed in action and was sent home to his family. And that's what they saw. And that's what his family saw. Years later, Stewart's family left the package at the wall. It says, Charles Stewart, mom and dad want you to have these cookies and Kool-Aid. It's time they gave these to you. They send all their love, Gary B. Some items left this behind reflect the deep longing for closure felt by many Vietnam veterans. One left this photograph. Delta 71, your face haunts me and the name is gone. So this photo was left by someone who knew him by how he looks, but didn't know which name was his on the wall. Couldn't identify him, couldn't take a name rubbing in a way, couldn't complete that experience. And I think for us, that's really the mission for VVMF. It's, it's to connect the faces to the name. Bain hopes putting the objects on display, along with photos of the fallen, will help veterans, families, and the nation to heal. 
it will give uh, visitors to the education center and I think visitors to the wall uh, a bit more depth of that experience to, to not just read the names, but to see these faces and to, to understand that these were real people, real human beings who, who had lives that were cut short. They're still raising money for the Vietnam War Education Center, but the plan is to build it across the road and underground so it won't interfere with the visual experience of visiting the wall. And in addition to the thousands of objects that will be on display, they also hope to include photographs of every single person whose name is on this wall. Dana? Oh, Chip, Chip Reed with a wonderful story yeah. there. I, I, you, I mean, you look at that, you, the last words there, the idea that it would be personalized. Everybody can sort of associate now, not just see a name is I amazing. I covered the opening of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in 1982. It was then and it is now one of the most moving places you could ever go. Just it, all those names make, all immediately make it personal, but there are always objects at that wall that people leave. Yeah. It's so touching. 58,000 American heroes. Yeah. Very special piece there from Chip. Thank you, Chip. Yeah especially to remember today. That is what today is about, remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice.